So this is a bit about what is a My Health Record and then what it isn't. So the My Health Record is a repository of documents. The um, Digital Health Agency keeps referring to it as a summary. The College of GPs disagrees with that. We think it's a repository of records of documents. Um, there are summary documents in there. If you create a shared health summary, then that, that is available uh, for the patient and for other providers to look at. But it's not a summary record. There's just lots and lots, potentially, lots and lots of information there. Um, it is consumer controlled, okay? So it's not controlled by us. This is the, something that a lot of uh, doctors have trouble with. But I like to think of it as a manila folder that a patient brings into a consultation. And they've already decided what they're going to show you before they come into that consultation. Well, this is what the My Health Record is. It's like a manila folder with bits of information in it the patient may choose to show you or may not choose to show you. Just like they do now with paper-based things. They may choose to bring records from other practitioners, they may not. It's not really any different. And remember, it's the consumer's or the patient's record, it's not our record. So what isn't it? As we just said, it's not a replacement for your local clinical record system. That still may be and probably will be more useful to you. It's not a complete health record, you know, and it's not a summary. It's definitely not a communication or messaging tool. Okay, we still want discharge summaries, specialist letters, pathology results to come to the doctor who normally treats that person. And this is something we as a college have been pushing and pushing and pushing um, because we hear pushback from some of the uh, hospitals say, oh, this is great, I don't have to write it, find out who the usual treating doctor is, I'll just post a discharge summary to the My Health Record. Well, that's not the way it should be used because you won't know it's there. So the types of content. So we've got uh, stuff that's entered by consumers. We've got a list there, personal details, emergency contact details, advanced care planning documents, personal health summaries, and personal health notes, which are not visible by us. Those personal health notes are things like, I'm feeling bad today, I'm feeling good today, a little health diary. Um, it may be something that they choose that they want to tell their practitioner about, but we can't see them. Uh, that was purposefully kept away because we didn't want to be um, continually asked to go and check my health record for information about what patients have been writing about themselves. Um, uploaded stuff in information by healthcare providers. So you can see there the shared health summary and event summary highlighted. They're the main ones that we'll be involved in. And then we've mentioned discharge summaries, pathology reports and diagnostic imaging reports. And then there's the uh, information that's supplied directly from Medicare, which is the MBS claims information. You might find that useful to find out whether somebody's had a 721 or 723 done somewhere else, um, if, you can, if you can be bothered looking into it. Um, PBS and RPBS claim inf information, that'll have the names of the actual medications dispensed, which I've already used uh, as I said the other day, I uh, used that for that lady with uh, Valium. I was able to check when it was last dispensed. The Australian Immunisation Register records, uh, that'll be very useful to know whether they've had immunisations. At the moment, um, that is uh, visible only in, a, in the um, child health section of the immunisation record, even in adults. Um, so if you're looking for it, you have to look in the child health section of an adult. Uh, to find the Australian Immunisation Register. That's because it was originally the, uh, the ACIR, the Australian Childhood Immunisation Record, and then they've moved it across and called it the AIR, but it's still in the same spot at the moment, and we're hoping that'll be changed soon. Um, and then organ donor status as well. If a, if a person has registered with Medicare, their organ donor status, that'll come across automatically. <clears throat> so... The shared health summary, that's the main one that we'll be uploading, uh, which is a clinical document, including information about the consumer's medical history, so their active and inactive problems, their medicines, their allergies, adverse reactions and immunisations. And that'll be coming directly out of our system. Uh, and it's actually with most of the uh, 
clinical desktop systems, it's really quite simple and quite easy if your record is clean and up to date. Otherwise, you will be uploading the rubbish that is in your record as well. So if you are saving all of your problems as UTIs, UTIs, uh, ankle sprain, um, and you don't want that to go there on the, the My Health record, you might want to tidy up that information. If you've got a medication list that has Keflex, 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 Triprim, all this sort of stuff, you might want to tidy up that because remember, as we said earlier, the patients are going to be able to see this and they're going to look at it and go, hmm, my doctor's keeping interesting records about me. It's not much of a summary. It's got a whole lot of rubbish in it. And then they'll come back to you and they might change, say, can you fix that? So this is a, a, an interesting thing that we've got to look at with the shared health summaries. It's a bit like writing a referral. You try to clean it up and tidy it up before you send it off. Although we also get reports in the various forums I'm involved with, with uh, lots of emergency department doctors and specialists saying that they're very unimpressed with the quality of some of the referrals that come from GPs, which has all that stuff in it. So clean up, tidy up your information, it'll look better, and then it'll actually be more useful for you when we start to use data extraction tools within the practice to analyse what we're doing. The event summary. Uh, that's a relatively new concept and uh, that's something you can choose to upload if there's been just a, a small event and you don't think that you need to upload a whole shared health summary. Or I think it's probably more useful for uh, if uh, you're seeing a patient who's not normally your, your uh, patient and you want to upload that you saw them and treated their cellulitis with augmentin or whatever. Um, and then the uh, next practitioner will know if they go and have a look at the record. However, if you are treating somebody like that, the ideal would be, as it is now, to send a letter to the treating GP to say what you've done. That would, what would be what we'd expect. We don't want to use, as we said, the My Health Record as a communication tool because the, the usual GP will not have any way of knowing that there's been an informa any information put on the My Health Record. If you use your medical director or best practice or ZMED or whatever, there's no alert to say that there's something new in there. <laughs>